So in this video, we're gonna talk about all things related to sciatica. What is sciatica? What causes sciatica? When we uh, regard sciatica to be a bit more serious? What are the best exercises to help sciatica? What might be the worst exercises to interfere with sciatic recovery? When might surgery be indicated? And what are the expectations of, for recovery? So the first thing we want to say is actually, what is sciatica? Well, sciatica is entrapment of one of five nerve roots. Uh, that's L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. Now, when we have entrapment of a nerve, uh, that nerve impingement, be it L4, 5, S1, S2, S3, we regard as sciatic pain. And when we have sciatic pain, we generally speaking have pain in the buttock, and then it will go down into the hamstring, we'll often get sharp cramping pain in the calf, and we'll often get, um, uh, maybe in serious uh, cases, actually a foot drop, so we lose control of the foot. So pain, if it's a sciatica in origin, is actually in the back of the leg only. Now the important thing to know about sciatica is because it's a general term regarding entrapment of one of the five nerve roots, it can actually happen in lots of different areas. And the two key ones that we're most interested in is whether the entrapment is due to a disc problem or the entrapment is due to, in fact, osteoarthritis in the back. There is a third form of sciatica, which really is a lot less serious, which is entrapment of the sciatic nerve as it passes through the buttock muscles here, and often we'll call that a piriformis syndrome. Now, we can get sciatica either with low back pain, or sometimes we can have it without low back pain. Most often with, but it doesn't have to be. If we have pain anywhere else, down the front of the leg or down into the groin, then we're not generally going to call that, call that sciatica because the sciatic nerve simply doesn't go there. So the first question is, when do we really have to worry about sciatica? When do we, uh, we think that it might be a bit more serious? And the simple answer to that is when the nerve entrapment becomes more serious. So if we start to lose feeling in and around our anus, if we have uh, start to lose feeling in the saddle area, so where we would actually sit down on the saddle of a horse, that's always regarded as a very, very much more serious uh, situation. If we start to have some problems with uh, urinary incontinence or some bowel or bladder movement problems, then that again is a surgical emergency and something that should be attended to immediately with a, um, a trip to A&E. But in the absence of those kind of things, if it's just pain or numbness going down the back of the leg, then that's a much more common, less serious form of sciatica. Sciatica itself can come uh, with regard to the back in two forms and the way that we treat that actually can be quite different. So the first form of sciatica is actually caused by a disc herniation. In this sense it's a bulging disc. A lot of um, people think that the disc has slipped but actually we can, um, that doesn't happen. So the, slip, the disc doesn't slip. Think more like a water balloon where you pinch the water balloon and that causes a bubble. It's that bubble that forms that then puts pressure on the nerve itself. Now, with regard to disc injury, there are a couple of things to say about it. So generally speaking, and again, this is a general observation, that when we have a disc injury, we will generally find that bending forwards is going to actually make the symptoms worse. And we can often uh, distinguish that through osteoarthritis form of sciatica because bending forwards often will relieve the sciatica. And actually, if I lean backwards, I'm actually going to make the sciatica worse. And that's to do with actually how the nerve is impinged. But with regard to a disc, Generally speaking, if the disc bulges and puts pressure on the, on the, on the nerve, we know that to some extent um, the problem is often self-limiting. And so what that means is that 
there's a good body of evidence now that tells us that if you have had a disc type injury, if you can just find a way in some sense to ride out the discomfort for a period of time, we know that the discs can generally heal themselves. And in fact, this grand experiment that we've all been uh, subjected to with regard to the uh, horrible events around coronavirus, we found that those patients that were due for surgery because of a disc-related sciatica problem, and they were in fact denied the opportunity for surgery because the hospitals were overrun with COVID-related cases, they found that over the year and a half that they were denied surgery, they actually found that the disc generally gets better. So the good news there is that whilst the pain is very, very severe, generally speaking, over time, if you do the right thing, discs will actually heal and uh, the pressure is taken away off the nerve. So the first thing to say is discs generally heal. Over time, most people will have some form of disc injury, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're actually going to have any long-term problems for that. The other thing to say about disc problems is that when di we do have a disc problem, we can often have a lot of inflammation that accompanies that, which means that the pain is actually very, very, very intense. Once the pain, once we handle and control the inflammation, the uh, goal now is to get the, uh, the disc to pull back off the nerve to get rid of the sciatic symptoms. Generally speaking, younger people, perhaps people under 40 or 50, are more likely to suffer a disc type injury. And so they're more likely the diagnosis of sciatica will be due to a disc type problem. And having had a disc type problem, it will need an exercise program more suited to recovering the disc. As you get older, what tends to happen is the cause of the sciatica is much more likely be, to be related to osteoarthritis. And osteoarthritis is essentially where you get a lot of bone growth into the hole that the um, nerve comes out of, and that uh, increases then the pressure on the nerve, giving you similar symptoms of sciatica. Because remember, sciatica is just pressure on the nerve, whether it's a disc or whether in fact it's a, a bone growth. If you have a osteoarthritic form of sciatica, then what you're gonna find is that you won't have any much problem flexing forwards often, but leaning backwards as you compress the joint more is actually going to cause some problems. But in all circumstances, the treatment is roughly the same. It depends whether it's an osteoarthritis or a disc problem, will direct you specifically to a different form of exercise, but the way that we treat that in clinic is always the same. So the first thing we want to do in clinic is actually establish what the cause of your sciatica is. Is it discal type sciatica or is it an osteoarthritic type of sciatica? Because as I say, the treatment slightly varies in a, in a in a specific sense, but in a general sense, it's the same. If you have a discal or osteoarthritic form of arthritis, the first thing that we want to establish is everything else, like your pelvis, your core, your hips, all working well in order to take the pressure off the back. Because generally speaking, what we find is that the back often isn't the bad guy. The back is often the good guy working really, really hard to try to protect you because other things aren't working. So one of the first things that we do in clinic that's perhaps a little different to other clinics is we want to try to strengthen up your core. We want to strengthen and make sure your hips are working really, really beautifully. We want to make sure that your rotation through gait is working really well, because if we don't do those things first, we're going to find that you're still going to overload the back somewhere. So obviously the strategy eventually is to try to strengthen up the back, but we often find the first thing to do is actually try to strengthen up the core, strengthen up the movements in the pelvis and strengthen up the movements in the hip. So what are the best exercises? Well, generally speaking, as we say, the first thing you want to do is actually increase the amount of pressure in your abdomen. And so what that means is the core stability isn't often what we might think. We generally think of core stability as just our six pack muscles here, muscles in our tummy. But actually that's not what, what uh, your core stability is. What your core stability really is, is your barrel of pressure that you can create in order to actually create a 
a bubble of pressure that protects the back. And that's made up of four things. It's made up of your diaphragm at the top, your pelvic floor at the bottom, it's made up of your tummy muscles here, and in fact, your back muscles at the, at the back. So one of the things that we advocate in clinic here is actually trying to do a core strength program. And to that end, we'd invite you to look at our um, core strength exercise program to try to build up the strength. But in general terms, this involves a lot of breathing work. It involves generally what we call them McGill Big Three, which is doing a lot of supermans and a lot of bird dogs and things of this nature. The second best form of exercise you will find with, um, with a sciatica type problem or indeed any type of nerve impingement is actually nerve flossing. And so what that means is you want to try to bend forwards and kind of extend the leg and bring the leg back again and extend the leg and bring it back again, flossing the nerve. Because as you do that, the nerve exits the spine by about 10 centimeters and retracts. And so you're trying to get desensitized that nerve in some sense to movement. So you actually experience a lot, lot less pain. So that's core stability number one, nerve flossing number two. And the third most important exercise, and this is Bill generally and uh, the McGill, ser uh, sorry, the McKenzie series of um, exercises, and that is trying to um, work into the movement, either flexion or extension, that gives you most relief. So, for instance, if you have a disc type problem, generally speaking, we're, we're going to find that you're going to really not like flexion based exercises because they're going to increase your pain. And so in that, in that case, we're going to start you doing extension type exercises. So you're going to do movement away from the, uh, the movement that's causing the pain. Or said another way, you're going to do movements that actually uh, decrease your symptoms. If you have osteoarthritis, you're going to be more likely to be saying, when I'm standing up, my back aches if I do it for any period of time. And then I get the sciatic symptoms, but leaning forwards, um, on a shopping trolley or leaning forwards on the counter reduces my symptoms. So in which case, you're going to do a lot more flexion exercises. You're going to move into the position that actually reduces your symptoms. So worst exercises. What are the worst exercises that you can do with sciatica? Well, we don't really think in this clinic that there are any worst exercises because eventually, if we can rehabilitate you in the right way, we so see no reason why all types of exercises should should not be uh, shouldn't be back on the table, providing you're prepared to do the correct rehabilitation and the correct strength work. But there are some general things that we can say about exercises that are not so good, and that's to do with physics. So, for instance, every ten degrees I lean forwards, I'm going to put a lot more pressure through the back, and that's just due to the physics of the moment I'm in this position. As I'm leaning forwards, I'm putting more pressure in this area here. And so things that perhaps should be avoided might surprise you. So probably the worst thing to do with a sciatic type back pain is actually um, sitting down, leaning forwards, lifting up your foot to put your boot or your sock on. The amount of pressure going through the low back then is almost 250 times the normal amount of pressure. And that's an awful lot. So worst types of things for back pain is actually leaning forwards and lifting your leg up because it's just putting too much pressure in your back in the early stages which it might surprise some people because often they think oh well the thing that i want to do most is be able to put my socks on in the morning and that's actually a pretty high bar when it comes to rehabilitating the back and that's one of the last things that would get you to do what about surgery? Well, we're not um, consultant um, orthopedic surgeons, and so we wouldn't um, want to advise you whether you want to have surgery or not, but there is some evidence um, uh, uh, that can guide you about what surgery uh, research tells us. And what it tells us is absolutely, in the short term, there's some strong evidence that actually can decrease symptoms of pain quite a lot in the short term. But actually, in the longer term, we find out that it doesn't seem to make much difference. And that seems to be borne out more recently by the uh, events surrounding, as I mentioned, coronavirus. Meaning, if you can ride out the really inflammatory stage of the problem, then we tend to find that the uh, disc will heal or we can actually find solutions that will help to strengthen up the back and uh, put more stability in the back to actually avoid the osteoarthritis getting any worse. So in a nutshell, 
Sciatica is caused by impingement of the L4, 5, S1, S2, S3 nerve root. Generally speaking, it's caused by impingement due to either a disc prolapsing or herniating or some form of osteoarthritis in the back. In all circumstances, the strategy is to try to build up the core strength, to build up the strength in your back, add some resilience, but we just need to make sure that we're doing the right form of exercise first and into that point we need to figure out if it's an osteoarthritic form of sciatica or a disc form of sciatica. There is one final form of sciatica which is very very much less serious and one that we've left apart uh, to last and that's due to tightening of the glute muscles and in that sense it's very very much more easy to treat because we're not really looking for something to heal necessarily it's more a case of just trying to reduce the tension in the buttock from the perspective and the lens that we look at in clinic what we're looking to do is try to, in the first instance, reduce inflammation, because if we do that, we're going to get rid of your pain. Number two, what we need to do is get your brain and your body to synchronize so you're stabilizing through your core, stabilizing through your back much more readily. Because what you really need to think about is, in the absence of trauma, how did this happen? How did I actually um, manage to get osteoarthritis caused by irritation in the back? How did I cause myself to slip a disc, cause an impingement? And very often the problem is that the brain and the body isn't synchronized to best provide stability. And that's really what we specialize in clinic is to try to build up that stability. So therefore you can go on to do your movement type exercises. And of course the final stage is your strength training. It's really, 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 really important that when the pain is gone and you have your full movement back, it's really now that the big, hard work starts because now you need to start to build up the strength in your back in order to become resilient to, to stop the problem uh, continuing. If you want to have a look at the exercise section, I would start with the, uh, once you've figured out if it's an osteoarthritic or disc problem, we need to get you going moving again. And once you're moving pain free and you have your full movement back, have a look at the strength training section to start your strength rehabilitation.